King Harothum had two sons. One was named Agnar and the other Geroth. Agnar was 10 years old and Geroth was eight. The two of them rowed out in a boat and hoped to catch some small fish. But the wind drove them far out into the sea. In the dark night, they wrecked and went up on the land where they met a poor farmer and they stayed there with him over the winter. The farmer's old wife fostered Agnar, but the farmer fostered Gareth and tutored him. Early in the spring, the man gave them a boat. When he and his wife followed them down to the shore, the man spoke to Gareth in secrecy. The boys departed and the wind was favorable. They came to their father's harbor and then Gareth, who stood foremost in the boar, sprang up to the land and shoved the boat back out to sea and said, go wherever the trolls take you. The boat drifted far out to sea with Agnar, but Gareth went inland to his father's hole. He was received well, but he learned that his father had died. So Gareth was taken as king and he became a famous man. Odin and Frigg sat in Hlafskjolf and looked over all the worlds. Odin said, look how your foster son Agnar sits in father's children on a troll woman in a cave, while my foster son Geralt is king and rules the land. Frigg said, but Geralt is stingy with food and he starves his guests if he thinks there are too many. Odin said that this was a tremendous lie. And so he and Frigg made a wager. Then Frigg sent her servant Fula to Geralt and had Fula warn him that a sorcerer had come to the land, but that the sorcerer could be recognized by the fact that even the fiercest dog would not attack him. It was in fact an idle rumor that Gareth was miserly with his food. All the same, he ordered any man who would not be attacked by any dog to be apprehended. Odin came wearing a blue cape and called himself Shadowed Face but said nothing more of himself, even when asked. So the king had him tortured in an effort to extract more information from him and had him placed between two burning fires where he sat for eight nights. King Gareth had a 10 year old son named Agnar after the king's brother. Agnar went to this shadow faced and gave him a full horn to drink and said he thought his father was behaving poorly to torture a man without cause. Shadowface drank, and by then the fire had grown so large that he had begun to burn his cloak. And this is what Shadowface said. You're a hot fire and much too big. Get away from me, flames. My coat is getting burned. Even though I'm holding it up, my clothing is on fire. I have sat between the fires here for eight nights and no one offered or gave me food, except Agnar alone. Now Agnar will be the sole ruler of the lands of the Goths. Hail Agnar, it's the chief of the gods who's wishing you well. You will never be repaid so well for one drink, no matter how long you live. I see a holy land, which lies near those of the gods and the elves. In that place, Thruthheim Thor will live till Ragnarok. All has built good halls for himself in Yidlir. The gods gave Frey the land of Alfheim long ago as a gift in his youth. I know a third place where happy gods live beneath a silver roof. It is called Velaskioth, the place Odin made himself in the old days. A fourth hall is Sokvabek which the cool waves crash upon. There Odin and Saga drink happily every day from golden cups. A fifth land is Gladsaheim, where gold bright wide Valhalla stands. That is where Odin chooses from the men killed by weapons every day. Valhalla is easily recognized if one comes to see it. The hall is held up by spear shafts. It is roofed by shields. Chainmail is on the benches. Valhalla is easily recognized if one comes to see it. A wolf hangs above the western door, an eagle above him. 
Theossi, the mighty giant, once lived in the sixth hall, now known as Thrymheim. And now Skathi, bright bride of the gods, lives in her father's home. Baldur built himself a hall and is called Breithablik. That's a place where I know you'll find little grief. Heimdall inhabits the eighth hall, Himmenbjörg. That is where he is the master. In that pleasant house, the watchman of the gods happily drinks his good mead. Freya rules in the ninth land, Folkvang. That is where she arranges the seats. She chooses half the dead who die in battle, and Odin takes the other half. The tenth hall is Glitnir, with gold walls and a silver roof. The god named Forseti is there on most days, and he settles disputes. The eleventh hall is Njors, which he built and named Nolten. That flawless lord of men rules the high-timbered temple. The wide land of Vithar is overgrown with high grass and weeds. That bold son of Odin is preparing himself to avenge his father on horseback. Andhremnir, the cook, lets the pork from Seyrhemnir cook in the cauldron Eldhremnir. There is no better meat, and there are few who know what the Einherjar eat. Battle-winning Odin feeds his tamed wolves Geri and Freki, but for his part, weapon-loving Odin lives on wine alone. Thoughts and memory, my ravens fly every day, the whole world over. Each day I fear that thoughts may not return, but I fear more for memory. The waves thunder and the Midgard serpent makes his home in Fenrir's sea. Dead men will find that sea passage too wide to wade. Volgrind is a holy hall with holy doors upon a field. That gate is old and there are few who know how it is locked. Thor's Hall, Vilskrinir, has 640 rooms, if all are counted. I am certain that of all of the roofed houses, Thor's is the largest. I think Valhalla has 640 doors, if all are counted. 800 Einherjar will march through each when the day comes to fight Fenrir. There is a goat named Haedrun who stands on Odin's hall and gnaws the limbs of the tree Lareth. That goat fills Valhalla's cups with bright mead from her udders, and that drink will never diminish. There is a stag named Eichthrynir who stands on Odin's hall and gnaws the limbs of Lareth. Drops fall from his horns into the well of Hivgrimir. That is the origin of all rivers. The river Sith and Vith, Saiken and Aiken, Sfjord and Gonthro, Fjorm and Fimpurthul, Rhine and Randi, Rgipun and Gopur, Gomo and Gerfmamol, Thine and Vim, Thorn and Hor, these conceal the gods' riches. Another river is Vina, another Vegsvin, a third is Thiothanula, and also Nit and Not, Non and Rong, Slith and Rith, Sildg and Yilg, Vith and Von, Vond and Strong, Gjol and Light. These rivers flow near men who die and go to hell. Thor will wade four rivers every day, the ones called Korm and Orm, and the two rivers Kerlog. When he goes to meetings at the tree Yggdrasil, Bifrost, bridge of the gods, burns bright in flame, and the holy waters seethe. The rivers Glath and Gila, Glare and Skaprenir, Slithpratop and Sinir, Gisil and Fothofnir, Gortop and Letfati. The gods of Asgard ride their horses every day over these when they go to meet at the tree Yggdrasil. Beneath the tree Yggdrasil are three roots which grow in three directions. Hell is beneath one, Jotunheim beneath another, and Midgard is beneath the third. A squirrel is named Raditas. He runs along the trunk of Yggdrasil. He takes the words of the eagle, tells his insults to Nidhogg below. There are four deer who stretch out their necks 
and eat the leaves of Yggdrasil, Dain and Dvalin, Dunir and Durthor. No fool has ever guessed how many serpents lie beneath Yggdrasil. I think that Boin and Moin, Rabak and Rafalfulf, Ofnir and Svafnir, sons of the snake Rafatnir, who always gnaws the tree's roots. The tree Yggdrasil endures more pain than any men guess. It's eaten from above by the deer, on the sides by the rot, and from beneath by serpents. They bring my horn, my Valkyries, pierced in mist, Skagriod and Skorbu, Hild and Thruth, Hiluk and Herfjot, Gowen and Geriol, Rangrith, Rathgrith, and Ranglif, they bring the Einherjar beer. Those slender horses, Ervak and Ausfjath, lead the sun across the sky, and the gods have hidden cooling bellows beneath their legs. There is a shield named Sviol. It is set between Midgard and the sun, in front of the shining sun. I know the mountains and the sea would burn up entirely if that shield had ever fallen down from there. Skoll is the name of the wolf who chases the sun till it sets at evening in the woods. Another wolf, Hati, is Hrofitnir's son. He runs in front of the sun behind the moon. The earth has formed from Ymir's flesh the sea from his blood, the rocks from his bones, the trees from his hair, and the sky from his skull. The happy gods formed Midgard for humans from Ymir's eyelashes. They formed all the grim clouds from his brain. Whoever first puts out the fire will have the help of all and all the gods. The realms will be open to all the gods when the kettles are cooled. In ancient days, the dwarves made Skithblathnir, the best of the ships for handsome Frey and the strong son of Njorth. The tree Yggdrasil is the best of trees. Skithblathnir is the best ship. Odin, the best god. Sleipnir, the best horse. Bifrost, the best bridge. Bragi, the best poet. Harbrook, the best hawk. Gorm, the best dog. I have shown my face in the presence of gods. Now help is on its way. It will come to all the gods of Aegir's benches when they drink at Aegir's place. I have called myself Grim. I have called myself Wanderer, Warrior, and Helmet Wearer, Fanged One and Third One, Thunder and Wave, Hellblind One-Eyed, Truth and Swift, and True Father, Battle Mary, Battle Stormer, Curse Side, Fire Eye, Evil Doer, Spellcaster, Mast and Shadow Face, Fool and Wise Man, Long Hats and Long Beard, Victory Father and War Ready, All Father, War Father, Rope Rider and Hang God. I have never been known by just one name since I first walked among men. They called me Shadow Face here at Garrow's place. But gelding at Asmund's, they called me driver when I pulled the sleds. And mighty at the assembly, among the gods I am called wish granter, speaker, just as high shield breaker, one bearer and gray beard, wise and wisdom granter, were my names at Sokmedmir's hall, when I deceived the old giant and I killed his famous son. I was killer. You are drunk, Geralt! You have drank too much. You have lost too much. When you have lost my favor, you have lost the favor of Odin and all of the Einherjar. I have told you much, and you will remember little. Your friends will deceive you. I see the sword of my friends dripping with blood. Now Odin will have a weapon killed man. I know your life has ended. Your guardian spirits have left. They see Odin here before you. Approach me if you can. Odin is my name. But before then they called me terror and thunder before that and waker and killer and confuser and orator god, heat maker, sleep maker, both gelding and father. I think all of these names have been used for me before. 
King Geralt sat with his sword on his knees, halfway drawn. When he understood that this was Odin who came to his hall, he stood up and wanted to take Odin out of the flames. But the sword fell out of his hand, fell hilt first into the ground. The king tripped and fell upon it, so the sword pierced him through, and he died. Then Odin left, and Agnar was king of the land for a long time after.